The balm yeah. of peace thrives at the heart of healthy communities, between friendly nations and the souls of the kind-hearted. The gods of peace inspire people of all sorts to resolve conflict and to stand up against those forces that try to prevent peace from flourishing. Clerics of the peace domain preside over the signing of treaties, and they are often asked to attribute in disputes. These clerics Blessings draw people together and help them shoulder one another's burdens. And the cleric's magic aids those who are driven to fight for the way of peace. These clerics are your best bro that want you to succeed in life and they will stop at nothing to make sure you do. <laughs> We're just going to cut straight. These are... Uh, the best team play clerics there are. It's mechanically a little bit boring, but goddamn, if you, if your friends don't like to fail skill checks and they don't like to uh, miss attacks, this is the cleric for you. It's goddamn god mode, and you get to choose the god in the DD table. We're going to jump straight to the spells, okay? These spells here are all to help your buddies. So we've got... Down here, we've got communication. We've got, hey, we're going to bring you back and put your arm back on. We've got, hey, we're going to protect you. We've got, hey, I want to chat to you no matter what dimension or realm you're in uh, with pretty much 100% chance of getting it there. We've got protection more. We've got more health. We've got hit points. And there's, you can't attack my buddy because uh, he's my buddy. Yeah. Goddamn. Like, that is a assisting crazy spell list. That's what you, if you want to be the guy that makes other people's end game fantasies and beginning game fantasies come true. This is the spell list for you. Yeah, they're all good. Okay, we're going to go straight into this because this is the crazy shit I like. All right. So we've got Implement of Peace. Mm -hmm. So you get the, this domain, you get uh, proficiency in insight, performance, and persuasion skills. All good. Go insight because sometimes it's okay mm -hmm. to go over and ask your mate if he's okay. It's very important, man. But we're going to look out for our friends and having that insight to know when they're doing okay or to persuade them to come and have a seat and a drink. Very important. The first feature, uh, one of the craziest features in the game is a concentrationless bless, except it's better than bless because it does. Basically, you can, uh, your proficiency score, you can tie at the start like two to three people, two other people around. You get into a bond with these people, and while they're within 30 feet, you can add 1d4 each turn once to one of their attack rolls, ability checks, or saving throws. That's... So you get that once per turn. Mm. So, hey, it looks like I'm going to miss. I'm going to roll my d4. Hey, it looks like I'm going to fail my saving throw. I'm going to roll a d4. Hey, my persuade. You can tie this together with you've got that bond on them. You cast uh, Bless on them. And then you can go up and pat them on the back and give them the help action yeah. or guidance. Yeah. Like, this is so crazy. Much so much better. Uh, it goes for 10 minutes because at the end, it says that each creature can only uh, add the 1d4 no more than once per turn, which tells you for that whole 10 minutes you're getting this, not just repeated casts on one person or however many people you're limited to, depending on the level. Everyone's getting that. Uh, if you're doing a yeah. skill challenge, uh, from uh, fourth edition, and your DM's running that. Everything everyone does gets a D four for the whole, more than likely the whole skill challenge. Ten minutes. There's ten rounds. <laughs> uh, ten rounds per minute. Mm. So that's a hundred rounds of every single turn. So if there's eight characters in combat, mm. that's eight hundred uses of this. If they're saving throws on every one, if they don't require reactions, mm. which as a D4, could be 3,200 extra save points. <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah. All right, so we've got that. Moving on to the next thing that's also <laughs> crazy. We're going to go to the Balm of Peace. Do you want to cover this one? Yeah, no worries. So starting at level two, you can use your channel divinity to make your very presence a soothing balm. As an action, you can move up to your speed without provoking opportunity attacks, and when you move within five feet... Any of, an, of another creature during that action, 
you can restore a number of hit points to that creature equal 2d6 plus your wisdom modifier minimum one. The creature can receive this healing only once uh, every time you take this action. So you can't just run back and forth past the same people. So, But when, yes. when your group's surround and pounding something, you can cut a hot lap around them, then you can probably get most of them. And we're talking a minimum of, like if you're a cleric, you should have at least a plus three. So we're talking a minimum of five healing points. Mm. And if this is at level two and the party gets down by a fireball and you're still alive, you do this and run past everyone, they're all back up, and then you've still got a bonus action to cast something. Quite powerful. The only people who are going to miss a bit of this will potentially be some of your ranged fighters if they're way out of the fight. But I found a lot of the time my ranged fighters tend to keep a lot of their hit points because it's usually the melees and the closer ones that uh, get hit a little bit more often. So uh, the healing's probably going where it's needed. As long as the cleric's up front, I guess. Yeah, but that'll only be a problem at this level. Later on, won't be a problem. So, next thing we're going to go to is the protective bond. So, beginning at 6th level, keeping in mind that as you get to 6th level, you've already got a proficiency of plus 3, so now you can get 4 people in this bond. Yep. Um, so, beginning at 6th level, the bond you take between people helps them protect each other. When a creature is affected by your emboldening bond feature, mm -hmm. it takes damage, a second bonded creature within 30 feet of the first can use its reaction yep. to teleport to the unoccupied sp occupied space within five feet of the first creature. Mm -hmm. And the second creature then takes all the damage instead. Yeah. So as long as the ranger isn't like 600 feet that way, mm. they get down, they're about to get downed. You teleport in front of them and take the damage. Yeah, if you've got some range fighters, you usually don't get or a couple of players. You usually don't get hit a lot. They could be sup supplemented in to take a hit and then get out of combat again. Just to keep rotating the damage so that uh, people aren't going down, or uh, we're not having to use revivify. We can just rest up or, or whatever method your party uses for healing after. Holy shite! That is just crazy. It couldn't get any better. It couldn't. <laughs> they couldn't make this any better. It'd be far too OP. What's that? Potent spell casting. <laughs> you made it better. You get to now add your wisdom modifier, which is at least going to be plus three to the damage you do with uh, cleric cantrips. Mm. Nothing to shy away from. This is basically your agonizing blast for your well, warlock, yeah. which well, is an essential feature for your warlock, and you get it for free without taking any invocation. You're doing Toll the Dead. Not only is it going to grow with your proficiency level, which also you can get more people in your group with the proficiency level, yep. but now your cantrips are going to do more damage uh, as they get more damage because you're higher levels than proficiency. So yeah, that'll God probably damn. encourage you to use more, a little more cantrips so you're holding off on the spells for either healing or some sort of uh, battlefield control. So uh, rather than using some of your other spells, I oh, like this. It'll give you uh, that little bit more. And I, I honestly think like everyone should get this. All casters should get this. But hey, this fixes it. You've got it. I'm happy with that. Here is God Mode. So <laughs> the last one, Expansive Bond. Mm -hmm. At 17th level... The benefits of your emboldening bond and protective bond features now work with uh, the creatures are out 60 feet from each other. Yeah. Moreover, when a creature uses protective bond to dive into there and take the damage, they now get resistance to that damage. Wow. Like, honestly. <laughs> well, I mean, previously to level 17, yeah. you're probably bringing your barbarian who was raging in anyway because he would, would, have, would have been taking damage and getting that resistance. But now anyone, like the, the fighter, the rain, they're, they're all now available. Everyone's on even terms. Everyone's soaking yeah. up the damage. And we can spread around a bit so everyone shares the damage. So this is really cool. Expands it to 60, so potentially your ranged fighters, particularly if your cleric's in the mid-ground, your, your fighters are up front. That means you can bring anyone round and move them. If your cleric's tired of just healing the one person, no, people can switch out, jump around, portal everywhere. If someone's up on a ledge fighting up there, well, now I'm going to portal up to him and I get to freely fight and portal. If, some, if there's a a, um, a door or like a, uh, a portalist in between you and someone else, you can now portal in and take the damage on people on the other side so you don't have things. And it's just boom, boom, boom happening everywhere. What, a, what an awesome little uh, thing for everyone to enjoy, not just uh, the cleric. This is... Your God mode. This is every like. If you don't want to lose, <laughs> this is this is you. This is going to make everyone's end game fantasy come true. Uh, this will allow the fighters that don't have winged boots to get around the battlefield. This will let the bar barbarians to protect the mages. Mm. This allows the cleric to um, <laughs> survive. 
throw into the fact you've got all this, you've also got the emboldening, uh, the healing balm or whatever it was, mm-hmm. then you've also got words like mass healing words. Like, if you manage to die while using this uh, subclass, it's most likely because you pissed your DM off and they just summoned a family of Tarask to destroy you. And even then, they would have a tough time. I'm going to start. Likes, all of it. Dislikes, nil. Yeah. It's hard to find something you wouldn't like in this. It's a, it's a good one for uh, doing exactly what you pay, you, you're paid to do. You, you're the cleric. <laughs> Get up here and heal me. Um, well, I, I love the fact that it isn't, like, it isn't just healing. It is mm. so much utility. It's ridiculous. Like, I 100% would, if somebody gets knocked off a cliff, mm. I would allow, like, within reasons and some sort of uh, role to teleport to try and help break the fall or something I stupid like to, there the goes my hero <laughs> like a diving catch to save your buddy and you form a chain by teleporting and grabbing each other like i would allow this for all sorts of damage if you see people in trouble um and you know even just walking through dungeons hey i'm walking through the spike goes off old mate appears and breaks the spikes with his shield and gives him a nod and then they make out furiously um <laughs> You know, love, love, you can't stop love. It, that's what I'm saying. You can't, can't stop love. It is fantastic. Uh, one particular thing I do like to see is another option for my channel, Divinity, as a cleric. You don't always get a lot of undead in uh, a lot of campaigns. Uh, some of them become a bit devoid of it. And so having these abilities that can't be used do feel like uh, I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I can't shine because my abilities are limited because the DM didn't put undead here. Well, guess what? You've got other options for using, which is what you're more than likely going to use most of the time. Uh, you almost wouldn't wouldn't want to fight undead anymore because you're going to you're using all your these abilities for uh, these other things your class can do now. Do all right. Character concept, Luke. Oh, oh, tough one, tough one. Put me on the spot. All right, uh, character concept. All right, well. For those people who want to play pacifists, I guess in D and D, this could be the class to do it. I know I, I, I myself tried to play a druid pacifist and I, I really struggled to get it to work and uh, make it effective and feel like the team didn't weren't, weren't all looking at me like, just hit the damn thing. Stop being a... Kill it. <laughs> Help us here. This could actually uh, be the closest thing where you could help people move around and do things. And then you throw up a couple of control spells and things like that and buff spells for people. And you could probably play the pacifist and the group wouldn't get upset with you. So I'd be looking at uh, potentially giving that a go and seeing how far I can push with this one. Uh, the, the pacifist who doesn't want to uh, hurt people, but will protect uh, the poor, the needy, the people, uh, and those murder hobos you call your friends. Yes. Yes, I'm very familiar with those particular people, Luke. My concept, which is basically... You play a multi-dimensional being where all of you, the reason you have this bond in a three-person party is because you are, in fact, the same person splitting time. So you're playing a cleric, one of them's a fighter, one of them's a caster, but you're all sort of like, think the bad guy from Chronicles of Riddick, where he's sort of almost like a, um, what are they, Echo Knight. Mm -hmm. So, like, I run over there, but then I can teleport over there and, like... 100% 100% I want to play this as three parts of the same being. Yep. Uh, hopefully, I believe there's plasmoids coming out in Monsters yes. of the Multiverse yeah, and a couple other ones like jump. that. Play one of those races mm. and put this in it and play it that you are all part of the same being. I put a little and you're basic, if one of you die, you all die. <laughs> so the DM has a chance. DM tips having one in the party. Remember, it's collaborative storytelling. We are definitely having the conversation about why we're doing it. Like mine saying, hey, we're three of the one thing and we're trying to, you know, separate, <laughs> we're conjoined twins sort of thing and we want to be able to run 30 feet from each other, but we can't. Um, so all these sort of stuff, it's collaborative storytelling. You don't, you're not fighting your players. I know it sounded like, oh, you're, it's going to be a DM's nightmare. If you do this right, the DM will love it and they'll be able to play into it and purposely like you can make it more dramatic because you purposely can try and kill one of them 
And it's like one appears, then the other one appears, and they're all protecting this guy that's on the ground unconscious. And yeah, I it should be collaborative storytelling. If it's not, it's going to be unfun for the DM and yourself. My tips for the DM is uh, I think this class carries most of itself. Carries most of itself. You don't have to make sure you set up something or uh, put them in a situation. Any combat is going to this is going these are going to be used. So I can't see. A lot of tips for uh, the DM. I guess uh, the only ones I've got for would be uh, tips for the players would be that uh, if you're playing this, potentially make sure you've, you've had a talk with your players to understand how they plan on fighting so that you can get the maximum use out of your 30 feet uh, before it becomes like level 17. Like uh, find out how far you're going to go with that with it from the DM. But uh, if you only got 30 feet and some people plan on being nowhere near, like they've taken some sort of sniping ability and they plan on being 300, 600 feet away, then uh, they're not going to gain the benefit. That might work for you because you can only bond with so many people. But um, so, yeah, just get understand the tactics of the group and understand where you need to be. Right? Uh, if you've only got 30 feet, then you've, you've got to be reasonably close to some of these people to able to lead uh, the trigger. So you're going to need to be a little bit hardy or very dexterous in trying to uh, get away from these fights that are happening around you if you're playing that peaceful style person. But you're still going to have to be close, which is also potentially going to draw fire and potentially with 30 feet still put you in a fireball's range. So just be aware that uh, you're still exposing yourself with, the, with these sort of distances to AOE and um, just having to be near enough to, to take advantage because you need you need at least two people who can be swapping out with each other on the regular and, and potentially yourself uh, to gain the full benefits of this. The last tip I have is nowhere in Protective Bond does it say that you need to be able to see them. Mm. All right. Very good. Hey, I'm locked in this prison cell. I'm in this prison cell. <laughs> hey, brother! <laughs> the prisoners keep ending up in the same cell. We don't know how. <laughs> but no, uh, do it. That's my advice. Play it. Discuss with the DM. Have fun. The end. God mode on. Play. Right, well, that was our quick uh, run through of a piece, Cleric. Uh, check out some of the other videos for uh, the other subclasses. And if we haven't done one, particularly from Tasha's, we're slowly working through that book, let us know and we'll jump on the one that you like uh, so you don't have to sit there and wait. Peace. <laughs>